Namaskar everyone and I'm trying to go live again. This is the second time because we were on and it seems like Yeshu's internet's kind of unstable. So we do have a really exciting thing to show you today. It's something very unique. It's probably something if you aren't from like South Asian culture or from actually South Indian culture specifically, you might not know about it. So I see Air Studios. Is that you, Yeshu? Am I am I adding you? Oh, okay, no, we have Yeshu here too. Okay, great. <clears throat> I hope that worked. Yay, hey. it did work. Hey, so second time's the charm. <laughs> Let's start over. So welcome to Daisy Talk. I'm your co-host, Rishi Prabha, the managing editor at India Currents. And with me, I have... Hey everyone, it's your girl Yashu here with Desi Talk. I'm your girl with the Air Studios and Happy Yashu. I'm so excited to share with you guys a very, very special part of my culture today. Yeah, so I know we already did this one time, but let's do it again. Right now is festival season, so we actually have a very cool thing that yes she's going to show us it's very unique to south indian culture like i said and it's actually part of the navratri festival so yes why don't you tell us where you are and what you're doing so i am alive from washington dc here to show you guys a big part of my culture growing up in america but being south indian I am here to show you guys the famous Navaratri Bommala Kolu, or as they say in Tamil Nadu, Bommay Golu. Awesome. So do you call it Kolu instead of Golu because the ends are different? Yeah. So I'm, my parents are from Andhra, so I'm Telugu, so I call it Bommala Kolu. So you wouldn't shorten it to Kolu, though, or would you? So it's the, the ending is the same. It's just the G in Tamil, and then the K in, in, in Telugu. Telugu, yeah. So I was, what I was saying was like my, like, Tamil friends would just call it Golu. So would oh, you call it that. Golu, or you would call it the whole thing? Sorry, what? <laughs> I lost Yeah, you. no, I think Kolu is, is completely okay to call it too. Um, Kolu means the display, and bommay or bommalu means doll. So technically, we when we invite people, we say, oh, please come to our house for the bommalakolu. So we're specifying that it's the display of the dolls. Mm -hmm. um, but kolu in general just means the display of. I see. Okay. Very cool. So tell me about South Indian Navratri kolu, golu, bommalakolu. What what does it mean? What are we? Why are we doing it? Why are you doing it? I've gone to it. I actually don't really know the mythology behind it. So yeah, tell me everything. Absolutely. So I'll show you guys exactly what a bomalakolu is. So, bum ba da ba. <laughs> oh my god, it's so sparkly. <laughs> it's the filter. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so. Awesome. As you all can see, this is a display of dolls. Uh, specifically, they're they're um, usually made out of clay, but they're clay figurines of our different gods and goddesses and just very important mythological characters and also just normal human people, for example, um, as a bride and groom or um, as a singer or a little dancer. So we've got all these different dolls that we put together on these staircases. Um, and usually the staircases, depending on the community that you're from in South India, uh, you can have anywhere um, from like, and it's usually in odd numbers because odd numbers are like auspicious. Mm -hmm. So um, you might have like 11 stairs or 13 stairs. Um, not sure how many we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven here. Um, and this is because I'm, Right. And usually my mom usually I used to do it when I was living here in DC. So I would go mm -hmm. all the way to like about 13 stairs. But my mom, I'm so proud of her. She did this all by herself this year without any of my help. She put the seven together. And I'm so proud of her because I know how much work goes into it. 
Um, but this is do a you go-go make and- the structure every year, the underlying structure? Do you make it every year? Do you have it like already constructed kind of? Great, great question. So my dad, and this is where I, I just I'm so proud of and this is why I wanted to talk about it today. What my dad did was we're probably one of the first families to have done a Golu here in the DMV area. So what he did was he made this staircase that collapses or that can dismantle so you can pack it up and put it in your attic or your basement or wherever you want to keep it. Mm -hmm. And so all the aunties and uncles started to reach out to my dad and like, hey, you know, Dr. Al, can you make us, can you make us, you know, a set of 11 or 12 or 13 or whatever, right? And so basically the way it's made, it's structured is um, wooden planks. I don't want to move too much because I don't want the Wi-Fi to cut out any in any situation. But basically it's like wooden planks and steel rods that are like, that have screws on them. And so you just kind of arrange it um and then you put the planks in and then you tie it with strings. So that's the way we have it so that it, you can, at, when the whole festival is over, you just unscrew it, take the rods aside, take the planks apart, and you can just store it away. So he, so is he it like you can add them. as many stairs as you want? Because you were saying that normally you guys have like 13. So um, you can make it smaller if you don't want to do all 13. <laughs> yeah, so on the is? first one, th- this tradition started way back in 1990 when mm-hmm. my um when my father's mother my grandma she came to america and the way that festivals are passed down in our tradition is it has to pass from the paternal side so so like my mom has to adapt the traditions that are on her husband's side so mm-hmm. my grandma has to be the one who teaches what are the traditions on their side of the family? So Navaratri is a really huge one. There's another festival in Andhra Pradesh specifically, only happens with Andhra, Mm -hmm. um, called Sankranti. That's another festival where they do the doll display. Um, However, Andhra is the only one. For Navaratri, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh, for example, they do the Kulu. So it's mm. only that one festival that's a little bit different. Um, Sankranti is what you said it was called? Sankranti, when Pongal happens. like uh, on. Yeah, that they, called it, they call it Makar Sankranti in the north, right? It's the farming, harvesting festival, right? Mm-hmm. So they call it Sankranti too. Interesting that they call, San, they call it Sankranti also in Andhra Pradesh because different language (laughs) right different language but i think it's the same like uh ideology it's the same it's the welcoming of spring it's the getting rid of the old like that whole festival so Mm -hmm. the the festival i think is common throughout india surprisingly um yeah yeah unlike the the name is not the same for all of them right because like you're calling it sankranti but we're also calling it sankranti which is interesting to me um, because then, like you said, it's also called Pongol, and it's also called a few other other things, the Harvest Festival, or New Year, or whatever. Um, but anyways, yeah, so you guys have uh, your Golu. So we're talking about that, and like how your dad made the structure underneath, and that's like a thing that's coveted. Does he make people pay for it? <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, there you go. He he doesn't make anyone pay for it. Um, this is just tradition. Like, I think being first generations or like, you know, even my father, like just being immigrants, I think it was really important to my parents and people of that generation to like withhold some of the, not withhold, but rather um, preserve some of those traditions. And mm-hmm. I, I'm going to make an attempt to go closer so I can show you guys exactly what I mean with some of these Beautiful features of this particular Golu. Mm. Talking about, for example, some of these pieces, like this one right here. This Mm -hmm. is pretty antique. This is passed down like three generations on my mom's side. So this was made in like the 1800s. Oh, my God. That's crazy. What is that a Krishna? No, this is is actually um, Subramanya Shanmuga. Okay. I don't know who that yeah. is. <laughs> That's um, Shiva and Parvati's younger son. And then there's Bilva, 
trying to show you guys <laughs> that you can go in here. Lead us. Lead us. Oh my here, God, buddy. he's hiding in so there. So here's the structure. Oh, that's the structure. Oh, wow. That's a really yeah, he's, sturdy he's structure. Our, mm-hmm. He's our tour guide, as you can see. Um, <laughs> and I'm then, surprised he's not knocking here. anything over. Very Trust careful. Trust me, we've had it happen before. detail. <laughs> 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 And these pieces, as you can see, like the paint is really coming off. But these particular pieces, these are my more generations. This is from my father's side. I'm gonna come back on this side. Yeah, shoot, we lost you. We lost you. We lost you. Repeat what you said about that. So the white ones here, which are the Ram, Lakshman, and Sita. Yeah. Those are even older. Those are passed down from my father's side. Mm-hmm. Um, those are probably about four generations. Oh, wow. Down. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. antique. You guys really, like, preserve. So during the year, do you have any of these on display, or they are kept away for that time They're period? Kept away. We wrap them up in newspapers, and we put them in boxes, and then we put them in our basement. So we have a closet in our basement that's just dedicated to all of these dolls. Okay, and once a year they come out. Because these are really once special, a- right? So you don't want to to leave them out like that. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And then these pieces here, these are little monkey puppets. Hanuman puppets. So the tradition so was cool. when my father was growing up, um, all the children when he was a kid would take their puppets and you, you pull the string. And when you pull the string, the, the Hanuman like jumps up. And when you pull the can string pull down, it, he or comes is that back down and is in the string. Say that one more time. I said, can you pull it, or is it in, like, a weird position? Okay, my mom's going to kill me, but we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> Don't tell her I did this. But this one's for you guys. Okay, hold on. All right, so, for example. Yay, oh I'm so excited to see this. I've never seen this before. Oh, my God. Okay. Ah! All right, hold ah! on. Technical, technical. Okay, here we go. Ready? So this is the monkey puppet. Mm-hmm. So the way it would work is you would pull this string. And then oh, put them on the jump. that's so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Do kids play with it? So, yeah. So growing up, the all the children, my dad's, my dad's, like, you know, friends and all of them would like go around and they would play, play, play with it. And the whole objective was you go to different houses in the neighborhood and do that. And then the aunties would like give you little sweets, laddus, whatever Aww. to the kids. So when I was growing up, my dad wanted to share, you know, his childhood with me. So what he did was he combined the Indian tradition with the American ways and he made basically like color your own versions so he made like little mini puppets for everyone all the kids and we would have like a station with crayons and coloring pencils and markers and we would like sit and color in our i would do that now we don't need to do that as kids i would do that (laughs) right now (laughs) invite me (laughs) i'm down but also like isn't it so nice the idea of like just having aunties give you all the sweets and you just all you have to do is be having a good time (laughs) So, Listen, food is such a huge part. I'm going to definitely take pictures of, like, how we celebrate Navratri and, like, what that looks like when it comes to food. Like, okay. we, you know, everything is homemade. My mom is making about five dishes, and then all the other aunties pitch in a dish, and we turn it into this huge potluck. Mm-hmm. And, like, it turns into just this really big, you know, it's a really nice festival where we're all sharing food and, like, having a good time. Um I also want to briefly mention, like, some of these other dolls here. Yeah. These are specifically from um, Tamil Nadu. So every year, Tamil Nadu does a really great job with um, these authentic dolls. So you'll see a lot of, like, the new age dolls. They'll be more, like, glossier and, like, like, like the Krishna and Radha. They're, like, a lot more, like, refined. But these are more, like, the traditional ways. And actually, these are from uh, Madurai, which is a a very auspicious space in, mm. um, in, in Tamil Nadu. So every year my dad made himself a promise. He would add one new doll to this Golu. And we've oh. like collected, you know, so what's, one. What's the new year. one for this year? It's actually this, uh, this particular set here. 
which is the bridal shower. So this shows you how a typical bridal shower happens um, in our Indian culture. The mm. wife, the the bride, or not, not? I'm sorry, not bridal shower. I meant you um, mean baby wedding. shower. Oh this no, is no, 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 baby, baby shower. shower. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Married. She has a bump. Oh. <laughs> They're really I'm hoping. So They're really hoping someone gets married and has babies soon. <laughs> Right. Now, this, <laughs> this particular one, I'm sorry, is a baby shower. And these dolls are so unique because they show you the traditions. Like, they mm -hmm. show you how they used to celebrate. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to show you guys, like, the different things. Yeah. It is our tradition in South India that you give the baby shower, the, the mother-to-be, bangles. You adorn her a handful of bangles. So mm. that's why they have the bangles. Oh. And then you give her, of course, all the fruit and everything. And then mm -hmm. as you can see here, this is like a flower garland mm. and flowers for her hair. And oh. this is also very tradition. You decorate the mother-to-be with, like, flowers. Okay. And then you give what her are all the – these are, like, supposed to be fruits and desserts and everything um, because you're supposed to make sure that the mother-to-be is well-fed and that she's, you know, getting all of her different forms of nourishment – and then as you can see here, this little bald guy is the dad. <laughs> oh, so where did, so what is the symbol, symbolism of this? Like, what does it mean to have this on there? On your goal? Stand? So I would say that nowadays, I think these different dolls have become a symbolism um, to show our culture. Mm -hmm. But traditionally, the whole um, Golu, the history behind doing a Golu is slightly different. And I can definitely get into that. Um, and I actually do want to get into that. I want to share with you. you before you do, where did your mm -hmm. dad get this new set? Was it in DC? Um, I believe he had his brother send, send because like I said, like, cause of COVID, they didn't go to India, but if not, they, every time they go to India, like that's they the bring tradition. Something they bring something back, yeah. That's they what I was wondering. Home. Yeah, but they couldn't so I go. Think, mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So I think this time, um, his like my uncle it shipped um, this particular set. Um, okay. Okay. I see. Okay. So tell us about the importance of Golu. Like, why are we why are we putting idols or Golu um, on the why are you putting idols on the stand? Absolutely. And I do want to say, like, Navaratri is celebrated differently throughout India. And we'll kind of get into that, how, like, North Indian Navaratri is a slightly different from South Indian. And then mm -hmm. also the significance of Navaratri. Again, Nav means nine. Ratri means night. So it's the nine nights of celebration. And so particularly the, the story that we celebrate in South India is a story of Mahishasura Mardini, who is a reincarnation or a form of goddess Durga. Mm -hmm. And so as some of you may know or may not know, goddess Durga is like the goddess of protection and um, destruction of evil, removal of evil. Mm -hmm. So the story has it that there was um, a really horrific demon king, uh, Mahishasura. Mm -hmm. And so he was one of the most powerful demon kings and had a huge army. And because of this, what happened is it was very hard for people to destroy him and, and or get, you know, get rid of him. And so what happened is everyone prayed to goddess Durga saying, mm -hmm. like, you need to come protect us. So then goddess Durga took the form of Mahishasura Mardini, right, the goddess who is going to slay this, this demon king. Um, and so she came, she came on to earth. And so when she came, however, she noticed that like um, his army was so huge. It was very, it was going to be very hard for her to beat him. So what she had instructed or, or rather the villagers or everyone, what they did was they said, okay, well, we will give you all of our dolls. If you can put life into the dolls, then they can join your army. So what everyone did was they started to like on a special day, like put out their dolls and the, the goddess then put life into the dolls and then the dolls joined her army 
And then now her army became bigger than his. And then after nine days of battle, on the 10th day, Vijay Dashmi, Vijay against means victory. She was finally able to kill the demon king. And so that's why for the nine days, technically, I wasn't even supposed to be touching this stuff because you're not supposed to move them because it's kind of like these gods or these dolls are now gods and they mm. have now, you know, have life in them and they're fighting evil as we speak. So mm. basically it's the symbolism of Navaratri, no matter where North India, South India, whatever the story is, is good versus evil. If you look at North Indian tradition, their whole story is about the battle between Ram and Ravana. And that's why you'll see a lot of times, especially in regions like Delhi and stuff, they celebrate Ram Leela. And that particular mm -hmm. festival, again, the destruction, good versus evil. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then on the 10th day, the Jedashmi, Ram officially kills Ravana. And that's why they set the, set the 10 heads on fire. fire yeah. as you I love doing that. <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> um, and exactly so, about 20 days after Vijay Dashmi is when you start to see Diwali, Diwali occur. Yeah. So it's kind of like the precursor. It's kind of the precursor of celebrations that are about to come. Um, our festival, our official, like real big festivals really begin during this particular season. Yeah. So can you answer our friend's question here? Um, how many gods are there on your Golu stand? On my Golu stand? <laughs> oh, on your Golu. Golu uh, stand. That's a lot. I'm going to have to like count each one. Um, <laughs> right now, I would say there's definitely more than like 30. <laughs> I would say like every every single doll here, even the doll of a, of a dog or elephant represents a god. Um, so right now, like everything that you see here, including, for example, again, I think the internet is not good on that side, but I'm not going to, so I'm not going to do anything. But like, for example, the dolls that you see over here, for example, um, again, a blend of America and India, when one of my aunties first learned how to crochet, which is something she learned in America, what she did was she made these dolls of me and my sister. And so that's me and that one's my sister. And so she, we, we then started incorporating them into our Golu as well um, because you bring all your dolls, whatever dolls you have. I remember when we first started our Golu tradition, I probably put all my teddy bears and Barbie dolls in there too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's really cute. Yeah, and why not, right? Because they're also dolls. Exactly. That's Absolutely. So cute. Yeah, so the person... <laughs> I don't know your name, but yes, that is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of dolls. And if, he, if he meant like in general, like Hinduism and how many gods, there's a lot of gods. We are a polytheistic religion. I believe that's the terminology for that. So that means we have multiple gods. We do come from a space of like elements of paganism as well, such as like having fire god earth god like we have those but in addition to that we have other gods as well and for every form we have a god so mm. well thanks for your questions goyard um so yeah let's keep talking about golu golu bumble golu um i'm north indian but i can get there i'm get, i'm learning so much from you like last week we i was learning from Uraputshiti. So like, we, you know, I'm getting there. You you guys are teaching yes. me the right words. Um, and I like Urapu. So I'm, I'm gonna keep that in my brain. <laughs> 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 so yeah, this is really it's really I don't know if who's watching this or if you're gonna watch it later. This is like very really, really special what um, Yashu is showing us because it's actually not something you get to see very frequently. And when you do get to see it, um, it's like very specific from household to household, like even what you have on display, right? Like the things that you're showing us are very unique to your home and like your traditions and cultures. So I know you were also saying that there's like other traditions revolving around the day that you, you have people come over and celebrate this, right? So like, what is it? What do you do with this? Like you have all these gods and then you're gonna celebrate um Vijaya Dashmi or you're celebrating Navrati what are you gonna do like what is the what does your family do absolutely and I'm so excited I honestly I have never missed a Dashara 
festival in my whole life other than COVID. And when that happened, I did like a like a Zoom version of it. But mm -hmm. basically what we do is we start with like um, all the aunties and uncles come over and we, of course, have like appetizers. This year we'll be having dogla, which is like a rice cake. Um, as Gujarati, well as, right? Dhokla is very Gujarati. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you guys are mixing some traditions, mixing some Absolutely. culture. Awesome. Yeah. And then probably samosa, because come on, what's a desi party without samosa? Without samosas. Yeah, you got to eat some samosas. <laughs> And so after that, after about like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, my mom will then have all the women because this is a very feminine, woman centered festival. She'll have all the women come downstairs to see the Golu of the year. Um, and then all the aunties usually like go in and they look, explore it. And again, I have to let you guys know, this is the smallest Golu we have ever done in our entire life. Right. And it was because Thank I wasn't COVID. here this year. Usually I'm the one who kind of leads it. Um, so actually we would actually have an entire, we, we would do a park or a village, which is very customary too. So we would have this huge sandbox that is about maybe, um, six feet in length mm -hmm. that we put, put like a, make a village out of it. And that's usually like one of my signature pieces of this. But like I said, I just, Isn't that you, do the, you do all the Golu stuff in the sandbox, like what you've made at home, you make it there. What do you mean by a village? Right. So the Golu, this particular staircase is the main feature. This is the Golu. Okay. It's like the yeah. major thing. But mm -hmm. what people also have done like over time was that they adapt, like it, it becomes very creative, right? So what mm -hmm. people started to do was they would find dolls of like little, like, like a woman getting water. You would find the doll of uh, a kid playing with a dog. You would get all of these other little, little, little dolls mm -hmm. that are uh, traditional. In fact, in Andhra, we have a village called Kondapalli. And mm -hmm. Kondapalli is very famous for their wooden dolls. They're Ooh. little tiny wooden dolls. And they're very famous. But they do a lot of like, like a auntie and uncle selling vegetables. They'll have like a little doll version of it. So you take all of those mm -hmm. little ones and then you can make it into like a village. And what we do for that is we have like a huge sandbox that we keep on the other side of the Golu. So for example, here we have the Golu and in this open space, usually we'll have the sandbox in this whole space mm -hmm. here, which is about six foot wide here. And then what we'll do is we'll put all of the, the village oriented dolls in it and recreate a village. So usually when I do it, I've got like a little a mountain in the back, a little pond. And I have a doll of Krishna in a boat. So I put him in the pond and then so I'll put cute. Like pool, and I go all out. So usually that I, and then, I think I was going to say, I think this is such like a fun cultural tradition for kids especially like even ad adults but like you can start as a kid right because you can give a kid a little area and be like okay you get to decide what goes here who do you want and then also talk about the mythology behind what you're giving them what they're putting there like you're saying you're putting Krishna in a boat like why would you do that that kind of stuff and and also like the craftsmanship that goes into these things is so important right because like you were even saying like there's that special village from where like near you, I don't know, is it near where you're from? But like, it's, they make a very specific type of doll that's like coveted, right? I feel like dolls, the wrong word. They're like little figurines. <laughs> figurines, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you guys, actually, there's one more section that I'm yet to finish. So for example, um, I particularly like to collect dolls of Krishna or figurines of Krishna. So mm -hmm. over time, since I was a kid, I used to collect Krishna dolls. And so I turned in, turned it into like, I, I actually have one more table here, this particular table that I will be arranging. Mm -hmm. And it'll be Krishna from birth to like adulthood. Because I have dolls for every single significant piece of his story. Wow. So as an example, I can show you guys this box here. And this is kind of like how we keep everything. This is a Kondapalli Bomma. I'm going to show you guys. This is particularly Kondapalli. Oh. This is the wooden one that you were saying that's like super special. They're very, yeah, it's so intricate. Mm -hmm. Wow. So and this, this is, particular is, theme yeah. is from 
is when Krishna steals the clothing of the women who are bathing in the water. Okay, yeah. I can kind of tell. I was I thought it might either be that or like, you know, he's known for stealing he all the time. So <laughs> and then we have this is the scene where he steals butter, right? Yeah, that's As he mentioned. The key. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so, so the mom ties him to the um to thing. The tree trunk, yeah. Right? And then I have when Krishna is born, he and this is also Kondapalli. Oh wow. So when Krishna is actually born, his father Vasudeva, he's imprisoned. So he carries Krishna and he takes him through the river to another safe location which is Vrindavan where Nanda Nandaraj is and that's where he Krishna officially grows up. Wow. So the Kornapuri. Do I have like all of this just like collection this is this is of course him stealing butter. He loves to steal <laughs> the butter. <laughs> so right. cute. Um but yeah just like all of these different pieces this is a very special piece. This is from my mom's childhood of Krishna crawling. And as you can see it has like a little hook here mm-hmm. on the back. So mm-hmm. what they used to do is they used to hang this where the baby would sleep like in the baby's room. Oh. And so every single child on my mom's side has had this Krishna when they like when they were babies in their rooms. Oh, so how how did you end up inheriting it? It's yours now? <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I my mom was like when they when that house broke down in 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 India, it's like a whole, very tiny village house. Mm-hmm. Um I guess my mom was like, "Oh, well, I'll take the Krishna or whatever." So she got it. This particular Krishna is Krishna dancing on the snake. Um oh, yes. For those of you who might remember Kaliya this. Kaliya Dhawan? Kaliya Dhawan? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I yes, know girl, some stuff. Yes, I know in Kathak you do so much Krishna mythology that <laughs> if it's not in your head at some point it's a problem. Like Ram Leela, you that's not Krishna but like you'll do Ram Leela, you'll do like Oh, what's that one? This is also Krishna eating butter but this is the super antique one. Oh, yeah, it looks a little bit old. So it's very old. This this belonged to my great 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 grandfather on my father's side. Mm. Wow. I can't wait to see what you end up doing with your table of Krishnas. I'm excited. Yeah, so usually I'll just like put all of his like his basically like from a childhood like as I showed you all of those and I arrange mm-hmm. it. I remember once cuz my dad he used to travel the world a lot mm-hmm. on conferences and what not. So one um one year what I did and he, every time he would go to another country he would get a doll from that country. So one year what I did was I did the world map and I would put a doll from all these different regions and we had a game for all of the aunties that you have to guess what country the doll is from and whoever Ooh. won would win a prize. That's a really fun game. I like that idea so much. It's such a good way to have a souvenir too. It's like something that you get to display and have out every year. Are they up this year on your Golden stand the ones from all over the world? No, not this year. Um and that's usually on another table. We used to have like another table where I'd put it. Like I said, most of the times this whole thing would be my ordeal. Like I would be the one who would put everything. But ever since I moved out of DC for my PhD, um my mom's been doing it by herself. And um Aww. I miss doing it, you know, but I know eventually like I'll get back into it once I, you know, settle down in life a little bit, get my job going on, be able to like put in a week off so I can actually sit and actually do it, you know, on time for that's, her and stuff. That's the other thing. I like let's talk about that for a second. We don't get any time off for any of these festivals. So it's not like they're not easy, right? Like I feel so bad for my mom because she would do all these festivals, but it would be like cooking at night after work or it's like okay, like mm-hmm. Friday night prep because I didn't have time during the week. I have to do grocery shopping the weekend before. And it's like, you know, Diwali, Navratri and this time period is so auspicious in 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 Hindu culture, Indian, I don't know. It's definitely not for non-Hindus always, but like for Hindu culture it's huge. And it's something that we like while people appreciate they're like, "Oh, Diwali, the festival of lights," you know, but it's like But there's so much other stuff that goes into it like you're showing like 
this is like an intricate, you know, an intricate pro- production that you're putting out and like having people over talking about it, getting to know it. That's the only way that, you know, our, our culture survives because like, you know, all of this mythology because you're, you heard it so many times, right? That's the same for me. It's like, okay, like on Diwali, I hear the same story one more time. And then I'm like, all right, I guess I kind of remember it. On Thij, I hear the same story again. And I'm like, all right, I kind of remember that. You know, it's like, it's like you have to keep doing it in order for it to be in your head. And then with our generation, it's harder because we don't have like, we, we don't know it as well as our parents because they were doing it in India where everyone's celebrating it with them and everyone around them is doing all these things. And then, you know, like here, we're trying to, to like basically learn it and then we don't even get the time to celebrate it. So it's like, I, I don't know. How do you like do all of it? I, I actually don't have an answer. I'm asking the question. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it definitely requires time and effort and like a lot of pre preparation about 10 days before the official start of Dashira. Um, and by the way, I want to say like, for example, North Indians call it Dushera and then South Indians, we call it Dasara. Right. So terminology difference there. But um, mm-hmm. 10 days before or so, my dad will go ahead and like pull down everything from the attic. And then, you know, he'll arrange all of the stand together. And then a week before maybe is when we officially start to like unwrap all of the dolls from their boxes. And yeah. then I have like a method like I know. And usually it's very similar. The first row on top is um, it features all the main goddesses. So just to show you guys a reference of what I mean. So we have, for mm-hmm. example, Parvati, we have Saraswati, we have Lalita, which is who is a major goddess that my mom particularly prays to. And then we have uh, Meenakshi and Lakshmi. So these are all like some main goddesses that we mm-hmm. that we particularly pray to. And then it'll come like some of these signature pieces. This is Annapurna, the mother of food. Um, and this is Adi Senkracharya, who did a lot of great um, uh, prayers. Uh, he's actually known as the father of Hinduism. Um, that many people don't know this, but he's the What's one. His that name? He is the reason. Adi Senkaracharya. Adi Senkaracharya. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And he's the reason why we have Hinduism today. So a lot, all the Hindu scriptures, all the Hindu practices that we have are all because of his teachings. So he's known as the father of Hinduism. And then, like, again, a lot of these we have, for example, over here, Ardhanarishwar, which is half Shiva, half Parvati. I showing love Ardhanarishwara. Yeah, that's awesome that you guys have that. Can you focus on that one? I love that. For people who don't know, it's like the embodiment of male and female. So that's so cool. I can't believe you have an actual figurine of that. That's so great. You guys so have a great collection. Is male. This side is female, the red side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Awesome. And then we, we have our Ram collection here. And then we have the eight forms of Lakshmi. Mm-hmm. And you know, Sushi, I had a really interesting realization the other day. Mm. You know, a lot of times, I'm a lifestyle coach. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when we teach people about like different aspects of life, I talk about family, finances, you know, like nutrition, fitness, physical health, emotional health. So as I was going down my list, I was just remembering the eight forms of Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar, like very similar to like the, the ideologies behind each of them. Like you have Lakshmi for wealth, then you have Lakshmi for emotional stability, you have Lakshmi for family and relationships, you have Lakshmi for, um, for uh, you know, just education, I think, you know, uh, just all of these different, and I was just like, wow, like, you know, there's a lot of similarities, and I was just like, this is so interesting, like, I feel like I could always, like, kind of, like, mention that when I, when I do coaching, I just, I would, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I even <laughs> think, like, when you think about even Durga or and also Durga Puja is happening. That's a huge Bengali one that's going to happen this weekend. So that's another 
festival related to this, but um, yeah, like you think about Durga, you even think about all the different facets of these deities, right? Of these gods, they're all pulling all these different parts of us. They're just like one form of an element or, or, you know, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, it has Absolutely. a similar like kind of idea of like the eight forms of Lakshmi, which all, ha- you know, are part of our life. And I, that's the one thing when you said polytheistic, it is a polytheistic religion, right? But the one thing I find is they actually all come together and form like one thing, right? They're almost, they are actually kind of, it's kind of a monotheistic religion. Cause it's like, it's saying that in general, there's so many facets of us and we have to access those facets in different ways. And then at the end, it all kind of like makes this whole and that whole is like, you know, you and like the universe and all of that. So I've always loved Hinduism for that specifically is that it's not saying that there isn't one God. It's not even saying there is there are many gods i think it's just saying there's all these different ways to like look at the same thing because even within that then you have lakshmi who's doing eight things but some of those things actually overlap with what some of the other <laughs> other guys are doing you know what i mean so it's like i you know i don't know but I, I like that there's all these different things yeah and also goddesses. Philosophy. like you know with hinduism there's like a whole philosophy that hinduism is and and that's why when i communicate about hinduism a lot of times i i segregate it between Hinduism as like we learn it from our scriptures and stuff and then I call it neo-Hinduism which is something that's more religious like the original Hinduism is more like philosophical it's a teaching of life it's the way life is even when you talk about parts of like Mahabharata and stuff like that you'll notice a lot of references to like day-to-day things they teach you how to do checks and balances in Mahabharata like (laughs) you know like life life skills are taught And then neo-Hinduism, as I call it again, is more like, oh, well, you have to do da-da-da-da-da. Like it's dictated almost as a religion would dictate. So that's where I think, you know, it's really interesting when you look at Hinduism. And I, as you said, I think you said it perfectly. Like all these gods and goddesses are embodied, are are basically fact pieces of us. And if you look at some of the philosophy behind Hinduism, you will see that this polytheistic religion is actually more relation. Like if you go more and more into the philosophy, it starts to approach atheism. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. And I, and I love that you brought this up because I think this is something we should talk about when we're talking about a festival and we're talking about these things that are happening right now. Right. What, what role does the religion play in our lives? And I think, You know, it's so interesting to think of it as a philosophy. It's also interesting for people to think about Hinduism as a thing that they are practicing and like in it and reading scripture and talking about. I think there's so many ways of taking religion, but I find Hinduism is actually particularly interesting because until more recently, I felt like Hinduism was just a way of life. It was like, I don't really religiously do anything but I felt it I felt it in my actions I felt it in the way that I thought I felt it in the way that I danced I felt it in the stories that I learned even the ones about Krishna stealing he right like I just felt like these were things these were elements of my life and it was almost like it's a more cultural way of viewing religion where it's like part of my life it's part of like what I know to be true of like being Indian right but then it's taken such a different turn. Like, I don't know if it's because of neo Hinduism, as you put it, or for whatever reason, but you're seeing this like shift, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's good or bad or what. I'm not, I'm not putting a lens on it. I'm just saying it's different. And I think people started to shy away from being called Hindu or be, or, or relating to Hinduism. And I'm actually very glad that we're talking about this because I know you're very passionate about your your religion and your culture. And I see it in the way that you talk about the mythology and the things that you've learned from it and how you've set up this whole thing about Gulu. And then I think for me, similarly, like I love the powerful women that came out of Hinduism from a very young age. I love Arthanari Sora, the concept of that, the idea that, that we don't have to embody only male or female attributes, but that we are actually just all one thing. And like, you can be as male, masculine, feminine, feminine as you want. That's like, very much as a non binary person was like, yes, this is like, amazing that this exists, right? I mean, I I understood it more as an adult, but like, it's existed in our culture. And so 
I, yeah, I feel like, I don't know what you think, Yeshi. These are my thoughts on religion and, like, how people are talking about Hinduism now. And I, I don't really want to shy away from saying that, you know, I am, like, I'm not a super religious Hindu, but I am a Hindu and I've been brought up that way. And I, and I love that about myself. And I don't want to ever, like, to deny that portion of myself because of all the other things that are associated with it, you know? I think a lot of times you see the rebellious kind of, the rebellious nature of people because you don't have people to explain things to you. So mm-hmm. a lot of times like when I talk to my brothers, for example, um, who, who claim to be atheists, right. And even in with people who are atheists, some people are, they don't know what the actual definition of atheism is. And they just kind of jump on the bandwagon. And it's like, Oh, well I'm atheist. And then if something wrong happens, they're just like, oh, God, like, this is all God's fault. And then you're suddenly you're well, you're not atheist, because if you're atheist, you don't even believe in the concept of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's like people are on different spectrums and different levels of that whole process. But for me, what I noticed was that when it comes to religion and anything, I think it's all about what gives you peace and comfort at the at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Some people find peace in saying, I will be responsible for everything that I do for myself, good or bad. Some Mm -hmm. other people find peace in knowing that there is a higher superior power who is there to protect or to to look up to give us a sense of hope. And that's really where religion as a as a custom developed. And and then, of course, religion more so started to become a thing with politics and, and trying to gather people together. Um, into a society and community became a thing. And that's more of, I'm sorry, my cat is like trying to get some attention. <laughs> his tail, that's his tail, as you can see. Um, so but, cute. <laughs> so if you see something flopping around, um, I, it's, it's him. I, it's almost <laughs> the end of our hour. So I do want to wrap up. Um, but I really like that we're having this dialogue. I wish we could have had it for longer. But I think we agree. I think we have similar ideas on this. Um, do you want to end with any special things about your specific Golu Golu experience and what we should take away from this? Like, what should we what should we take away from what we've learned today from you? Absolutely. So this whole festival is about good and evil and the destruction of evil. And I guess all I want to say is for anyone who's like going through a tough time or going through it all right now, like just know that good times are coming. That is the significance of the celebration. And I wish and pray that for all of you guys who are tapping into India Currents. And I also want to say you don't have to be Hindu to celebrate Navratri. My neighbors who are from Bolivia will be coming over. My best friend from El Salvador will be coming over to celebrate celebrate with us so we make this into a tradition to just welcome people into our house let them know that we are here to celebrate good times and good fortune for them as well and for all of you and for people who may not know Navaratri is also celebrated by people who are from other religions as well we see references of Navaratri and its celebrations in Sikhism in Jainism right so we see it happen all the time and a lot of it now is just cultural it's it's not it's more like adapting to the ways of our culture than it is about the religion aspect to it and I think that's the last point I want to make that you do what makes you happy and like gives you a a remembrance of like who you are and what your heritage is and that's exactly what this is for me oh that's such a wonderful sentiment to end on I love that that you know good times are coming and you you celebrate what you want to celebrate and embody what you want to embody So with that, I think we're going to sign off. But this has been, honestly, look at this beautiful structure display that we got access to from Yeshu. Um, Do this again, but with Indian food. Oh, my God, Goyard, you stayed the whole time. That's pretty awesome. And we do actually have – that is actually the next one. You, You will be able to learn some Indian recipes for actually this festival season. So Join us next week for that. It'll be really interesting. I believe um, Yeshu's, one of Yeshu's brothers will be telling us like what he's cooking every single day of Navratri because there's actually specific meals that people eat every single day. Um, so I'm very excited for that. And uh, yeah, please come back next week. See you later. Bye, Yeshu. Have a wonderful Navratri and Golu. Bye, little kitty. <laughs> See ya. Oh.